Hey everyone, I'm really excited to let you know that Adobe's just dropped a new update to Photoshop today, and this is the June 2020 release. So right now I'm gonna show you the new features inside of this new drop. Hey Cafe crew, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. So right now we're gonna look at the new features in the June 2020 release of Photoshop. So why don't we just jump in right now and have a look. So this is Photoshop 2020 and the new features. So the first thing I wanna mention is there's some new branding. And in fact, when we launch Photoshop, you'll see the uh, new splash screen with the new Creative Cloud logo. And also these icons are new. So there's the Photoshop one and there's a the Lightroom Classic one. So they've gone to three digits for some of these. Um, and no bezels around the outside. So I'd be kind of curious what you guys think about those. All right, so select subject is that amazing tool of the one click, it makes the selection. So let's have a look right now. So here we go, we just need to select either object or quick selection tool. And this gives us the option to select subject. So to compare it, why don't we start here with the older version of Photoshop 2020 and I'm gonna click on select subject and let's see what it does. And there we go, there's our selection there. And you can kind of see, you know, it's a little rough around the edges and stuff like that, but not so bad. All right, now let's go ahead and click on it inside the new version. Select subject. And look at that, it gets the hair and different things like that. Definitely a lot better. Okay, let's compare it to something else, maybe a little bit more difficult. So let's look at the previous version here. Select subject. And it's not bad, but as you can see, it doesn't really get here between the arms and stuff like that. We've got a lot of webbing going on, which is one of the big problems with it and also the hair. So why don't we try it now with the new one? So we're just gonna click select subject. And you can see, oh boy, that looks so much better. All right. All right, so as you can see, it's definitely doing better selections than it used to before. Um, so they've updated the AI, that's Adobe Sensei, to focus on portraits and hair. So that part of the AI has been trained a little bit better and I can see the results are definitely looking good. So let's have a look at another one. One thing that can be a little bit annoying sometimes is when you're opening up documents that have a bunch of fonts in there and the fonts aren't there and you've got to have to go out and sync those fonts and you know all that stuff so one of the nice things they've got an auto activation now for the fonts okay so let's just have a click here on the fonts and we're filtered by our fonts and you can see we've got all the fonts are there and that's because these are adobe fonts so it goes out and finds those fonts from adobe font and syncs with the computer and it all happens seamlessly in the background all right, so let's have a look at one here where we don't have the fonts and let's just filter by font here. And we can see the ones with the Adobe fonts are all activated and they're working fine. So it doesn't just activate them, it actually finds them. And then there's a couple here that don't have them. So these were the passes for a tour I did a few years ago. Um, but if the fonts are missing, we see this little exclamation mark. And if you double click on it, it gives us three options now instead of two. One is cancel, and that means we can just go ahead and keep working. We can scale those fonts, but we can't type in new things. Replace will replace with the default, or we can click on manage. And with the manage, we can go in here and we can see these are the fonts that are missing. And we can go in here and replace them, or we can just replace them all. So these are the fonts that are missing in the entire document here, all in one place. Nice and handy. All right. I think it's time to look at what I think is my favorite new feature. All right, let's grab these raw files and click open. And look at this. So they completely updated the user interface for camera raw. It's sleek, it's modern. I'm really liking it. So a couple of big things um, over here, the film strip. So right now we've got it horizontal. And if we click and hold, we can change it to vertical. And you can also decide how much you wanna show on the details just by clicking and holding to change these and see how we can just really shrink it down, save some space. And of course we can click there to hide it or show it. So we've got that nice control over the film strip. Another thing you're gonna notice, gone are the tabs. Now we have one big panel here 
And this is just like in Lightroom. So the settings have always been the same as Lightroom, but now the user interface is a lot more similar as well. And notice right now we've got multiple panels open. We can right click here. We can go to single panel mode. So when we open a panel, it closes all the others. We can go into multi-panel mode so we can have more than one panel open at a time. We can right click. We've got other options. We can expand all of them so we can just scroll through and see all the settings in one place. Or of course we can go down here and we can collapse them all and just make it nice and easy to work with it there. Another thing you're going to notice is our toolbar instead of being across the top now we've got all our different tools here and of course we've got other options there we've got our preferences right there and of course you know we can go full screen look at that definitely nice all right so there's a couple of new features in here and one of the new tools is the ability to adjust the hue on the local tools that would be our adjustment brush gradient and our radial so let's use the adjustment brush just to kind of show you how it works. I'm going to turn on auto mask and why don't we mask her jacket. So why don't we go in here, turn on our mask here so we can see what we're doing and just quickly mask this. We don't need to get it perfect. I just want to kind of show how this works. All right, so let's turn the overlay off and watch this. Now we can go in here and we can adjust the hue so we can change the color of different areas of this photo. So obviously, you know, we've got the hue there. We can change the saturation. We've got a lot more interesting things we can do. Now, if we use the fine control, that means it's going to move much slower. And that's great for going in and doing things like, you know, just lightly adjusting skin tones and things like that. See how we can get a very precise adjustment. And here's a little tip. If I'm moving this quickly and I hold down the alpha option key, it goes into the fine mode. And then as soon as I release that, it goes back into the regular hue mode. So a really exciting thing is ISO adaptive presets. So that means when I create a preset, if I choose to use this feature, I can have something like noise reduction adapt for the ISO on the photo. So if I have a Photoshop of very, very high ISO, it can apply a higher amount of noise reduction compared to a photograph with a lower ISO. So that's really neat. And in fact, I've got another tutorial that I'm showing you guys of the new features in Lightroom. And I'm going to cover that one in depth in Lightroom. It works the same here inside of Camera Raw. And of course, you might be wondering where the presets have moved to. So if we look here and you'll see this little icon here, we can click on there. And this opens up our presets panel. And all our presets are in here. And of course, we can roll over these presets and see a preview on them. Just like we would inside of Lightroom. And at any time, just click back there and go back to our adjustments. So if we click in here, we can see how these change for the specific tools we're going to be working with. There's our brush settings at the top now. Nice and easy to work with. Okay, so let's go under the window. And under window, we're going to go down to our patterns. And here's a little pattern that I created. It's kind of a scan line, kind of TV scan line effect. So let's just drag and drop it onto the picture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode of this. Maybe into something like a soft light. And you see we get that kind of TV scan line kind of effect. Now, in the past, if I wanted to do something like turn this into lenticular, which means that this would be rotated uh, 90 degrees, we'd have to create a pattern that did that, but no more. If we double click on here, here's our pattern fill, and now we can change the angle. So if I want to put in 90 degrees, I just type that in, and now we've got a lenticular kind of shape. Or if we do 45 degrees, let's have a look at that, and see now we can do these angles. And if you remember how difficult it was to create uh, something like this in the past, it was actually quite hard. But another nice thing about it is it doesn't just work there in the pattern fills. If we go under our layer styles here and we choose a pattern. So here we go there. We can do the same thing. So we can pop these in there and we can rotate these. 
Let me change that to soft light before it uh, freaks you out too much. Drop the opacity down a little bit. All right, so those are the new features that we've got inside of the June 2020 Photoshop release. So I'm curious, what do you guys think? What's your favorite new feature? Let me know in the comments underneath. And also, if you guys are new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button right now and turn on all notifications and then you'll get a notification whenever I upload a new video. And by the way, every Tuesday we're dropping a video, every weekend we're doing a beginner's video, and every Thursday we're doing a live stream. So we'd love it if you would come and join us for all of these great Photoshop learning opportunities. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this. If you did, smash the like button into dust. In fact, I'm going to say something different. What do you think if I say for now and select the like button? Because that's more Photoshoppy. So if you like this, select the like button. Let me know if that's good or bad. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.